Some no, um, amazing outfits, I have to say. I like that because it looks like it was taken in a hotel foyer early one morning. Oh, this has jumped ahead, but I, I found this as well. This is this violet colour is uh, the latest from NARS nail varnish, and it's very nice indeed. Well, I think it just shows that glam still exists in the popular imagination. That's why we're doing a show here. I think. Well, yeah, because I noticed that they've done... Um, there's a beautiful Warhol range as well that's just come out of makeup. Have you seen that? I haven't. But <laughs> there's, a glo- there's a shop at the bottom of Bolt Street in Liverpool called Glam Rocks. Oh, really? Which is short, actually. Yeah. Which is very I'm 70s, sorry. in fact. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, if anybody wants to go out and buy this, it's in the shops now. I will do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, well, this was. Have, I, have we jumped ahead too much? This, this was. No, it's good because we're talking about Mark McLaren. Who's, yes. And what's, happen, what's happening here? What's, uh, well, we should catch up with the story because it's gone, gone out of sync a bit. But <clears> the New York Dolls albums, although they sold relatively well, they didn't sell enough for their company Mercury. And, and the Dolls had bad habits and they were wildly profligate creatures. And, and so in the end, they got dropped by their label and they got dropped by their management. But Malcolm McLaren decided that he was going to rescue them. And the rescue package was this red patent leather look. And I think McLaren's press kit was, what are the politics of boredom, better red than dead? And they performed behind, in front of a communist flag. They did indeed, which Sarinda Fox sewed for them on the floor of her apartment. Um, And the outfits were designed by by Vivian Westwood. And the fabric itself is almost industrial. burly sort of bends so how how they managed to actually sort of creak around in that I don't know but they did and they went on tour right they did go on tour to to the American South they did but I was I was just going to say first I mean the the other very unfortunate thing about this is of course when they're doing this this communist look the Vietnam War is still going on yeah and I think it's Rolling Stone magazine said said they were being nihilistic which they probably were but that was how the New York Dolls were, but then they go off on tour, wearing these <coughs> outfits, of course. Commie chic. Commie yeah. chic. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And that was completely, I mean, you can see how Malcolm McLaren is a, like a really important figure in that, in that, in that sense that he was, um, you know, to become the manager of the Dolls, and then, you know, a year, a, a year later, he was with the Pistols. It's quite interesting. I mean, I, I do think that kind of glam wasn't something that just sort of stopped in 75. There was a kind of bleed, really, and there's a relationship between people like Johnny Funders, who was in the Dolls, and then he, he, then he was in Heartbreakers, still wearing his heels. Oh, yes, you so. can't separate a good man from his heels. No. Um, but I, I, think, I think the point to say here was that, that when the Dolls split up and Malcolm goes back to London, he wanted their guitarist, Sylvain, with, with the curly hair at the end, to join the band, but Sylvain declined. Mm-hmm. But he used a lot of the sort of Dolls antics as, as the template for the Sex Pistols. Mm-hmm. And the other thing he said to me rather endearingly, because I interviewed him for this book, what did he say? I put here, Malcolm remembered the dolls with fondness. Girls' underwear never looked the same again. <laughs> okay. That's great. Oh, is there anything else? I think... Oh. Oh, yes, this is really important. This isn't the order that I wanted it to be in, but this is the New York dolls on the El Grey whistle test. So if we go back in time and we go back to... They did Bieber and they did the El Grey whistle test. They were the two important things that they did and that appearance I think Bob Harris called them mock rock which in a sense the whole sort of generation of future punks and from Morrissey saw them, Paul Cook from the Sex Pistols saw this appearance, I saw this appearance and it was either Joe Strummer or Mick Jones from The Clash saw them on the Old Grey Whistle Test. Mm-hmm. And in a way, this was the sort of warning shot to the future. This is what was going to come next. Mm-hmm. Because although the dolls, we can say that they're glam, they still had that street punk kid to them, especially Johnny Thunders, who you can see in the corner there. So that was a riveting performance. Mock rock as well. I mean, it's quite important what, 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 what Paul, Paul Gorman was saying this morning. I think there's a kind of... Um, I suppose the sort of the mainstream um, were probably it was sort of the idea of 
prog really and authenticity <coughs> and LPs and they probably just saw us and thought what is this how come they're taking the mickey out of the stones you know which is kind of what I, I guess what Bob Harris was saying it, uh, it probably wasn't for, from his perspective yeah you could understand that but I mean I think I was 13 at the time and most of the punk generation to be were all 13, 14 and at that that age the Rolling Stones seemed like old men and mm. boring so it was it was time for the next wave and this was tougher and bawdier and, and funnier and I think it's Paul Cook said that they were sort of falling all over their platform boots and it was a great moment and also for the old grey whistle test it was particularly anarchistic mm. because it was it was a program that had grown up bands on and it wasn't very exciting. <laughs> okay. Right, so this is how I thought Jackie Curtis travelled to, to Biba, really. <laughs> Through James Wedge. Through James yeah. Wedge, because you can, you can see the sort <clears throat> of influence. James Wedge took the photograph. I chose the model. Oh, Did you really? You chose SC. That's well chosen. Who's the model? <laughs> because of exactly that, because of Jackie Curtis. Really? Oh. Wow, Who amazing. Who is she? Um, I can't remember. Okay. She never looked like that. I was <laughs> to get that into her. Yeah. She didn't thank us for it. <laughs> so it's destiny that we're both here no, to... That's quite strange, this. A glam destiny. Oh, there we go. That was Candy Darling as Candy Darling. That should have been after the Sorinda pig, but there we go. Oh. The dolls. <laughs> what can you say about this? Well, this was their first album cover, and, <coughs> and this sort of sealed their fate in a sense, and there was quite a few radio stations that wouldn't play the album because of the cover. But um, David Johansson, I've got a lovely quote from David saying who, who he thought everybody was meant to be. Where is it now? Have you got the page? Oh, here we go. Okay, I wish I could do David Johansson's voice, but anyway, he says, I look like Simone Signore, Johnny looks like Anna Magnani, Jerry looks like Lee Remick, Syl looks like Polly Bergen, and Arthur's got a deer trick thing going on. <laughs> but um, it was taken by a Vogue photographer and his partner did their hair, but they're, they're wearing all their own clothes. What have we got now? This might be the last one. Well, it should be, but I've got a feeling there'll be other ones after. <laughs> Don't worry. This is now, if you go to any market or t shirt thing, this is the sort of mass consumption New York dolls that we see now. It's, it's easy to print and everything. <coughs> but I mean, back in the day, such a thing would have been completely unimaginable, as would this sort of parody of New York dolls that, that currently exist. Because for me, the, the original dolls finished in 1975 and, and they were a glorious moment and they were related to that moment and they were the children of Warhol but that's the image you're most likely to see now oh no we came to the end of it okay is there anything anything else you feel we should cover or I don't know I, mean, I just think um, the dolls are pretty and pretty important because they're kind of um, proto-punk really I think as well and it's one of those groups that are completely a transitional brand about or they were completely they could only have been they could only have emerged in the glam era but at the same time the whole the sort of hardness of the sound was completely I don't know it anticipated what came next I, I think well, we should conclude that when Malcolm McLaren organised the Anarchy Tour, he took um, Johnny Thunders and Jerry Nolan from the Heartbreakers, former dolls mm. who'd started the Heartbreakers, joined the Anarchy Tour. So in that way, the New York Dolls journey continues through into punk, mm. and perhaps that's where we should finish. Yeah. There is a bit of time for questions or comments. <laughs> uh, 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 uh,